The Solomon Aeroglide 2 is a maximally cushioned daily training shoe. One for those everyday miles, you know, those zone two type of runs, just designed to log the miles and increase that aerobic engine. It's stacked with ultra soft energy foam, but light and airy in the upper to keep your feet comfortable from step in to that last mile. But what's new and is the Aeroglide 2 any better than the original? Well, let's find out. Well, hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Steven. First, I'm gonna let you know that Solomon did send the Aeroglide 2 to me to review. They're not gonna see this footage ahead of time they're not going to proof it. They're not telling me what to say. I'm going to give you my completely honest thoughts, just like always. And if you would look below in the description, there is a link to go purchase the Aeroglide 2 if you are so inclined. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does help support the channel. Well, first, let's talk about the stats of the Aeroglide 2. It is a neutral road running shoe, and there is some flexibility and a little bit of twist to the shoe. As for the stack height of the Aeroglide 2, it is the same as the originals, and that's quite high in the rear at 37.4 millimeters and the front 27.4 millimeters for a massive 10 millimeter drop. Make no mistake about it, this is a maximally cushioned shoe and there's a lot of that midsole foam. The weight of the Aeroglide 2 did actually increase over the originals just a little bit. My men's size 11 weighed in at 10.3 ounces or 294 grams, which is 11 grams heavier than the previous version if you're keeping track. The fit of the Aeroglide 2 is a little bit bigger than most Solomons out there. It is a little bit wider in places, but we'll get to that more in detail. As for the length though, my men's size 11 seems to fit just fine like most other Solomon shoes do. The upper upper of the Aeroglide 2 is a synthetic mesh material designed to be breathable and plush. It features the sense of fit construction with overlays on both the medial and the lateral sides to give you just a little bit of support and structure. And I do think this is where some of the little bit of that extra weight comes in. You can see there are some more overlays now on both sides of the shoe, which is going to increase that weight a little bit. As for the breathability of the Aeroglide 2, it's pretty much the same as the first version. Take a look at that tissue test. You can see when I flip the hair dryer on low, the tissue did come up a little bit, you know, not a lot, just a little bit. And when I switched it to high, the tissue went up a little bit quicker, stayed up. But again, it's uh, definitely not the most breathable shoe that I have tested. However, when running, I don't feel like these overheat. They, my feet have not gotten hot yet. However, it's really not gotten higher than maybe 63 degrees here in Colorado Springs. So uh, in a very, very hot environment, these might be a little bit warm. As for the overall fit of the upper of the Aeroglide 2, it seems to be uh, decently wide in my opinion. The toe box, I can actually move my toes and my forefoot around just a little bit inside the shoe, which is different from a lot of Solomons out there. And in the front, by the way, you can see there are actually a couple of additional overlays that wrap the front of the shoe. This was not here on the original version. As for the medial arch, uh, really, again, feels fine. No pinching, no hot spots. However, I might say it's a little bit more narrow than I was expecting for a shoe that has such a wide toe box. But, but with that said, it didn't give me any hot spots or any discomfort. And like I said earlier, the length is typical Solomon. The 11s fit me just fine. However, I really do feel that the overall fit of this shoe is designed for somebody with maybe a little bit more volume in their feet. The tongue of the Aeroglide 2 seems to be pretty much just about identical to the first version. It is nicely padded. It provides plenty of protection over the top of your foot from that lacing system. The tongue is not gusseted on either side, but really that has not been a problem. It's not been moving around on top of my foot at all. The lay flat laces do exactly just that. They lay flat, they stay tied, they haven't come untied yet, at least for me. Really my only issue, and this carries over from the first version, is the laces. They are very, very long. And again, that just kind of gives me a little bit more evidence that these were designed for somebody with maybe a little bit more volume in their foot where I have these kind of cinched a little bit closer. These ones not so much because I've got a uh, thing inside to keep them firm for this review, but uh, normally they're cinched a little bit closer when I run. As for the heel collar, Solomon says this is a uh, plush heel collar. I gotta say I disagree just a little bit. It's, don't get me wrong, it's plenty padded, it's fine. It's just not what I would say is plush. Uh, even the Solomon, I'm thinking the Pulsar Trail, a trail shoe had a much more plush collar than these did here. But like I said, it's not been any issue. It's been fine. Uh, I just would not overly say it's, it's plush. The lockdown in the heel with the lacing system has been fine. No issues there. No heel slippage. It's been perfectly fine. The top of the heel uh, counter here, as you can see, is flexible, but then it gets very stiff uh, at the bottom. Overall, the upper of the Aeroglide 2 is pretty much the same as the first version, except this one has a little bit more overlays, and that's probably about it. Otherwise, it's plenty comfortable, 
good enough for those long daily miles. The midsole of the Aeroglide 2 is Solomon's Energy Foam, and as you see, there's a lot of it. This is a tall shoe, lots of that Energy Foam inside. When running in these, I do feel like the shoe was designed for maybe someone that's a heel striker. There is 37.4 millimeters of that midsole foam in the rear, and when you impact on the heel, it absorbs it very nicely. It's pretty darn comfortable. The geometry is Solomon's reverse camber, which is basically designed to provide a, a quick and smooth transition through your gait cycle. And again, I think this is more evidence that it's designed for a heel striker to go through that cycle there. But I have to disagree with Solomon's claim of this being a swift and responsive stride. To me, these felt perfectly comfortable and fine at those slower, easy paced runs. If I wanted to pick up the pace and go a little bit faster, maybe do some fart licks, I really didn't feel hardly any responsiveness from this energy foam, if I'm honest. It was, um, yeah, just not responsive. Uh, it was great for those long, cushioned runs, but this is not a shoe I'm gonna go do speed work in. Let's just say that. Honestly though, I do think these would be fantastic walking shoes for someone with maybe a little bit more volume in their feet, uh, or maybe somebody that's kind of new to running and just wants to get into it for the first time. As for the outsole of the Aeroglide 2, it's pretty much unchanged with a couple of things that are changed, but basically the same from the original version. And it is uh, Solomon's Contagrip rubber, perfectly fine on paved surfaces, buffed out, super easy trails, no issues there whatsoever, provides plenty of grip, uh, plenty of channels here for rain. Uh, honestly, I've had no issues with traction with the Aeroglide or the Aeroglide 2. The lugs, as you see, are very flat and wide, providing a good contact patch with the road. Again, you know, it's a road shoe. And if you look in the middle here, you see there is clearly a very large decoupled groove. And basically that provides a little bit of flexibility to the shoe. And you can see that when I squeeze the shoe together, it definitely creases right there in the center. Honestly, the only thing I see different on this versus the original version, as far as the outsole goes, is right here in the back. There used to be one of these rubber band type uh, rubber pieces that went across the uh, decoupled groove right here. It's not there anymore, they got rid of it. Don't know why, but it's not there. Oh, and there's a camouflage pattern, that's it. Well, just like the first Aeroglide, there's really not a lot to say otherwise about this outsole. It provides plenty of grip, traction, and I think it's gonna last quite a while because it is pretty thick. There's a good layer of rubber. As for the price of the Aeroglide 2, it retails for 160 US dollars. I said this before in my review of the first original version of the Aeroglide, I'm gonna say it again. I think that's a little high for this shoe and what you get. There's other shoes in this uh, kind of line, we will say, let's say the Hoka Clifton 9. That retails for $145, that's a maximally cushioned road shoe. Saucony has the Ride 17, which retails for $140. Both of those are very similar in stack and feel. Um, I just really don't know. I don't see anything else that separates this shoe above those. I think this would be better suited at that 140 to 145 price point with the competition. The bottom line of the Aeroglide 2 is it's a decent shoe. It's one that uh, is really not any different from the first. Very, very minimally different. It's one of those times that I'm gonna say maybe Maybe go try to find a pair of the original Aeroglide on sale, which I've seen right now for about $72, depending on the size that you wear. So maybe uh, maybe go pick up original if you like that. Or if you really want to get into the Aeroglide 2, look below in the description. There is a link, like I said, you can go purchase those. Help support the channel, doesn't cost you anything. Overall, great shoe, I think, for someone that is going to be walking, maybe getting into running has a little bit more volume to their feet because it is a shoe designed for probably a more voluminous foot. Um, but yeah, otherwise, you know, it's a decent shoe. Anyway, let me know below in the comments your thoughts. I'm curious if you've tried the Ultra Glide 2, if you tried the originals as well, what you thought of those. Let us know below in the comments. I'm sure everybody would be very happy to see those and curious of your thoughts too. Well, if you didn't see the original review, take a look on your screen somewhere right over in this area. You can take a look at the full review of the Solomon Aeroglide. Thank you all for watching. I do appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one.